The mat density is adjusted with the mat tools and the density tab. The mat tools allow you to select pixels from the screen, while the density tab allows you to adjust the density parameters. We'll start by setting the viewer to the alpha channel so we can see our mat, and turn the viewer gamma way down so we can see we've got some transparency here. This should be a solid mat. So the way we fix that is we come up to the mat plus tool, meaning increase the mat density, and do an alt command, click and drag, and voila. Next, we'll turn the viewer gamma up so we can take a look over here at the umbrella, which we wanted some transparency. So if I'd like to increase the transparency, I will then select the mat minus tool, and again, alt command click, in order to say, reduce the density of the mat in this area. Okay, I'm going to undo all of that and home the viewer so that we can take a look at the density tab itself. Here's the density tab, and this allows you to adjust the density of the mat in different parts of the picture, bright, dark, warm, cool. For example, the white shawl. If we look at the RGB, we can see this is a very bright object. Oh, let me put the viewer gamma down. This is uh, supposed to be a very bright object, and it's terribly transparent. So I'm going to adjust the brights up and fill in the shawl. I'll undo that. Now, down here is a worm parameter. So if we look at our original picture, we can see this red shawl, which is a worm color. Watch how it responds to an adjustment of the worm mat density. I can bring it up or down. I'll reset that. And similarly, the cool. Over here, the umbrella, you can see is very cool colors. So I can lower and raise the density of the mat in the cool parts of the picture. So we'll home the viewer, undo all those adjustments, and set it back to RGB so that we can take a look at the edge kernel next. Let's zoom into the picture and look at the dark edge alongside this skirt. Very often your composite will have these dark edges from light objects, so the edge kernel can help with that. Watch what happens to that dark edge as I adjust the edge kernel. See? It pulled it out. Now let's take a look at the alpha channel to see what's going on. The edge kernel does a density change along the edge here. I'll, I'll exaggerate it so that you can see. Does a density change along the edge to help tuck in those dark edges. We'll put that back to RGB and rehome the viewer. Now that the matte density is set, the next operation is the shadows. The Shadows tab is only enabled when there are shadows to process. Now in this particular clip, in order to actually capture these shadows, you're going to have to split the key, because this blue screen down here is a very different color than the blue screen up there. Back to our story. To activate shadow processing, you select the Shadows tab and turn on Enable. Let's set the viewer to the Alpha channel, and we'll zoom in here to see some shadows. We can dial in the shadows first by increasing the low value up like this, and that brought the shadows in. And just to show you why you have to have this enabled, you can see the difference in the mat when the shadows calculations are enabled and disabled. Another adjustment you have is the blur, which softens the shadows, and to see the tint, we're going to have to go back to RGB. By the way, you can also adjust the density while you're looking at it in the RGB mode. And the tint will give it a color. So we'll pop up the color chooser, and we'll just select a nice red, and there you go. And I'm going to disable the shadows calculations and reset the viewer. With the shadows properly adjusted, we can now turn our attention to spill suppression. The spill tab contains all the adjustments for refining Ultimat's superb spill suppression. By default, it's enabled. Let's take a look at the umbrella. Since it's a semi-transparent object, it's heavily influenced by the spill suppression. First of all, watch what happens when I enable and disable the spill suppression. By default, the spill suppression is enabled, and normally you're going to leave it that way. We have adjustments here that can be used to dial in the spill suppression, either increase it or decrease it in the cool, warm, mid-tones, brights, darks, any part of the picture you want. Watch what happens when I adjust the cool. Keep in mind that that umbrella is kind of a cool color as far as color temperature goes. Now, moving it to the right means I am pulling out more blue. I am increasing the amount of spill suppression. Moving it to the left, 
I am reducing the amount of spill suppression so it turns more blue. We'll set that back to default. The worm colors, such as these jackets. If I increase the spill suppression, I'm pulling more blue out of them. And I go down the other way and I'm adding more blue back in. We'll put that back to default. Similarly, you can adjust the midtones and the brights. In fact, uh, let's take the brights since the umbrella is also a bright. So the umbrella will be affected by the bright as well as the cool slider. We'll put that back. Ambience. Ambience is the spill replacement color. And it is by default 0.5. But we can certainly dial that up. I'm going to turn it into a heavy red just so you can see the effect. And now I can dial the strength down and up. And you can see the umbrella picks up more red, turning it white. I'll put that back to default and reset our color. The background veiling adjustment overrides the default background suppression. And generally speaking, you don't want to mess with this one. It will really destroy the spill suppression. If you're working on the spill suppression and you get things all jacked out of shape and you're lost and confused, just click the reset button and that puts the entire spill suppression algorithm back to the default state. We'll home the viewer in order to take a look at the last tab to adjust, which is the cleanup tab. Normally you want to leave this tab alone. Let's see why. The cleanup tab is used primarily to clean up defects in the screen backing region only after screen correction adjustments have been exhausted. It's a dangerous tab, so let's take a look at cleanup. We'll switch the viewer over to the alpha channel, and we'll zoom in for a closer look. Watch what happens as I enable and disable the cleanup tab. It has a profound effect on the mat. I'll enable it so we can take a look at each of the adjustments. The cleanup slider will clear the noise out of the backing region, but at the expense of hardening the edges of the mat. If you lower the cleanup value, you can actually get it back to looking like your original mat. We'll put that back to default. Let's zoom in onto one of the mats here so we can take a look at the shrink parameter. The shrink slider will actually do an erode in order to shrink the mat. You can see it getting smaller and smaller there. The blur parameter, of course, does a blur on the mat. There you go. And the recover sets a threshold below which everything is protected from the cleanup processing. I'll home the viewer so you can see that in action. I'm going to set the recovery slider higher and higher and all the defects start to work back into the picture. So setting the recover back to zero means that all the pixels will be processed with the cleanup. We'll set the viewer back to RGB and close by reminding you that the Ultimat keyer is one of the oldest and most professional keyers in the industry and does an absolutely brilliant job at blue screen and green screen keying.